Welcome to It's the Economy. India is going through its longest streaks of positive closings. 12 in a row and let's see how it, things pan out today if it's 13 in a row. Now, does India still remain attractive despite these high valuations, especially of the last two weeks? How crucial are the August employment numbers from the US? Can they derail the rally in both countries? You, I mean, in fact, the global rally. To get a 360-degree perspective of the global macros and the preferences of global investors, I have with me Bhaskar Lakshmi Narayan, the Chief Investment Officer and Head Investment Management at Bank Julius Baer in Asia-Pacific. Uh, uh, Bhaskar, thank you very much indeed for sparing time for us. Uh, I went through your street cred, your past uh, uh, you know, uh, positions. You've been distributing a lot of money or investing a lot of money for investors pension funds. So, you know, from that point of view, I want to ask you, 12 in a row, as it is, India was considered rich in valuations. What's, uh, uh, I mean, would you invest now incrementally? Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. And, you know, I would say, like you, 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 you did say, valuations is a headwind. Uh, this is something that everybody has to acknowledge at some point or the other. Um, the growth story is great. I think everybody understands the growth story in India, the structural nature of it. All of that is well understood. I think it's all about a question of how much do you want to pay for it. Um, and what's also beginning to happen is you're beginning to see a fair amount of activity globally where you're at least not possibly getting the same growth rates, but you're sort of getting something on an adjusted basis, but where you're playing much, much lower. So I think it's also what's available as alternates to global investors. From a, from a global point of view, it's getting more and more difficult to catch this runaway trade. Difficult to make a case for India, you mean? Yes, in India, absolutely. Because, you know, it's not stopping. Like you said, you had now 12 okay. successive days of up. It's possibly going to be the 13th. And okay. it's not that yeah. even when the pause came, it was of, of any long nature. So I think people are not able to buy a correction. No, but, you know... Uh... The MSCI EM index uh, has an India weightage of almost 20%, uh, 19-something, right? Uh, the passive funds obviously give 19% uh, of their money. How much do you think active funds give? The sense we get is it is much less. At some point, the reckoning has to come? Uh, you know, this is the thing. And, and what's also surprising in that sense of the world is almost everybody that we're talking about on the active side is underway China, right? So... If I look at it from that perspective, uh, India should not only get market weight, but should get above market weight. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Uh, there is an impending flow argument from uh, from foreigners. But I think I think it's just a question of, like I said, you know, when, when things are moving so fast, uh, it's about when do you jump on the, on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Uh, but where would they be putting money if they are not if they are underweight in India, underweight compared to India's MSCI weight, and underweight China? Uh, where is the money going? What are the so I think what's things? happened is a lot. A lot of people have become APAC as against this MSCI Asia X Japan. So Australia has been a big receiver of money to some extent. Uh, Korea has been again uh, a favored. So is Taiwan. Uh, the, the you know the whole AI space has has made the Taiwan quite an attractive market to be in. So I think that's where much of the money has gone. Um, and then the value plays in places like Hong Kong and Singapore are extremely attractive, with many of them trading below book, you know, which is not a word, which is not a terminology I think you can use in India for almost anybody. Uh, and I think on single digit PEs. So I think that's what's making the allocation go towards those directions. It's really, it's, I think valuation is the only real headwind that I can see uh, as what is stopping a greater allocation to India. Okay. No, I agree with you. Just now we, are, we were discussing uh, the Bajaj Housing Finance Company and uh, uh, priced book uh, is over three times. And uh, comparable companies are, uh, you know, at almost one and a half to two. So really it is expensive versus more expensive that we are debating over here. Under one, uh, I, I guess almost non-existent, not even PSU banks. Okay, on that note, uh, let me ask you your three best investments globally today and your three best investments in India, if you were to put money? So, unfortunately, I can't give you individual names, but, you know, I will tell you this, in terms of uh, globally, you know, we are we are still very favored towards, uh, I would say, the max sevens. 
So that's possibly the best place to be from a global investor's point of view. When people allocate a large amount of money, uh, that's still where bulk of the money is still this going. Level? And at this level, so. Magnificent? Uh, one minute, Bhaskar, at this price, you still prefer the Magnificent 7? Because if you look at if you look at the valuations even now, they are they are. I mean, if, if you talk about valuations, right? Uh, they are still overall acceptable in in many ways. Uh, they are not like, you know, they are not like uh, out of range or they are not at, at peak levels or they are not like bubble valuations in in many respects. And there is still a fair amount of growth uh, which justifies the pricing. Absolutely yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Sorry, I, I interrupted you. I was asking you your top three uh, uh, investment destinations today. Outside India and in India. In India, what I would buy today is definitely all of the large, I mean, I think the large caps. I would just stick to the large caps. I think they have not done as well. They are they have been tried and tested through every cycle possible. And I think the BFSI segment is is actually looking very, very nice. I'm not, yes, there are some NBFCs which are very expensive, but I think the the, the traditional banks look a lot nicer and cheaper and, and more properly valued. Uh, with, especially if you believe in this growth story in India, uh, banks will have to be beneficiaries. So I think that's the place I would really focus on. And despite the fact that consumer discretionary is expensive, I will still buy them. Okay, that's as close to giving us a name uh, as you can probably. Uh, what about the EMS companies? Uh, they're not quite consumer durable, but uh, we just had Keynes on the channel and yesterday we had Dixon on the channel. And India has big ambitions in this space. Uh, do you watch them? But yes, I would. I, you know, I would participate in them. I would definitely have them as an allocation in the portfolio. How much would be a question of again pricing and and how quickly, how how much you believe in these in these growth rates? Uh, because one of the things when it comes to this segment is about execution. You know, you just talked about gains, and but it's all about execution. So I guess we need to be careful about uh, about potential versus execution. Mm. Okay. W would you look at other spaces like near equity or well, not exactly non-equity, but near equities like, like REITs or proper real estate financing? Uh, there are a lot of AIFs who are doing it. Uh, any of these n near equity f uh, uh, asset classes? You know, I've dealt with REITs for a very, very long time. Globally, it's the most misunderstood asset class in the world. You know, so I would, I would say I want to actually be very supportive for REITs in India as well. But, you know, uh, I know that, the, you know, we are, we are looking at a place where we need some sort of an EU play. And I know that REITs possibly are the ones that will fit in there. But it all depends on how, you know, I know it's a very complicated structure as to how it gets paid out. Uh, return of capital, dividend, interest income. So it's all about taxability and, and the net income you finally make. So it is a fairly complex subject, but I am supportive of REITs. Okay. Now, in short, uh, is India getting it right? Uh, no, I think it's it's a little. I, I would say I would say you can you can simplify the REIT structure a lot more, and and possibly provide a certain kind of tax structure around them, which will make uh, significant uh, inroads into how people will look at infrastructure investment. Okay. No. Well, I think we must get together both on and off cam to uh, you know get this subject right. Uh, uh, a serious uh, discussion on this is something the policymakers will, you know, will, will appreciate and will perhaps take cues from. But that for another day, because the more pressing thing is the data we are going to get on Friday from the United States. How crucial is the non-farm payroll? Can it derail this uh, two, three week long rally? No, I don't think, I think, I think even if it's a bit soft, uh, I think that's been well off. What it will lead into is, it will lead into a question of, does the Fed cut 50 basis points instead of 25? as the base case, you know, and I think that's what the uh, the dialogue will will tend towards. So I don't think a slightly softer number necessarily derails uh, the current thinking or the current market action that you're seeing. So we are still very, very pro uh, markets. We do believe that you could get some consolidation, but those consolidations are actually buying opportunities. Um, so absolutely, I think we are, we are, look, the bull run in the US, which is a global bull run, if you were to say, started in October 22. And this is not stopping. Okay. So your uh, base case is a soft landing. And how many uh, uh, Fed cuts in the current year or in the next 12 months? We are a lot more conservative in terms of uh, Fed rate cuts. We have uh, 
about one or two for this year, depending on how they will they will orchestrate the September one. And then we have about three for next year. Okay, so clearly you're betting on the uh, uh, soft landing and on the economy being fairly robust. Uh, okay, uh, so point the, taken. The economy is fairly robust. Yes. Yes, Absolutely. yes. No, I, I mean, I take your point. There are many people on that side of the fence saying that it's too robust and to expect four cuts and five cuts this year is uh, 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 certainly no case for it. The, but the, let's the see. economy is running the way it is. We don't stop it overnight either. So. Mm, fair point. Okay, let me just wind up by asking you a question on India debt. I mean, God included in the index, the macros are improving in terms of inflation, growth, current account deficit less than one. I can't remember when I reported current account deficit less than one, uh, fiscal deficit declining. Uh, is is this bond rally uh, secure? Is it likely to continue? And do you see it crowned with a rating upgrade sometime soon? So you know, the upgrade is is possibly the you know thing to look out for. But I would I would say. Uh, as a bond rally, again, you have the same issue with bonds uh, in India as you have with equities. They're getting fairly expensive very quickly. The taxation doesn't help. Uh, so I think I think um, I'm possibly, if you ask me to pick between equities and, and bonds in India, I would pick equities. <laughs> okay. Well, the money is talking a different language. You're getting hand over fist uh, bond funds in. Uh, but uh, I guess the equity, as you said, as we discussed earlier, it's still waiting on the sidelines and it may have to buy expensive going, the, uh, going by the way things are. Thank you very much. Barker, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for spending time with us and we hope to have you as a regular on the channel. Thank you so much. Look forward to it. Okay, well, that's the word uh, coming in from Jul uh, uh, Julius Baer, Bank Julius Baer, and uh, clearly bullish on India, but uh, worried about valuations. We wrap up on that note on uh, Bazaar Chartbusters is coming up after a very short break.